Hello, beautiful souls. I think it's Monday. If it's not Monday where you are, it feels like Monday. It's rainy, it's dreary. So much stuff is happening. Today, I will give you another shadow work series video. And this one is one of the, the hardest concepts um, when I'm discussing with a client when they're doing their shadow work and they are escaping and I try to guide them to lean into the feels. They don't know what that means. It's a foreign concept. So let's get into it. When I say feeling is healing, it's true. When you allow yourself to feel the feels, so whatever it is that you're trying to deal with, betrayal, abandonment, love unreceived, disrespect, manipulation, um, any and all things. In order to get down to the, the nitty gritty and deal with the source of the trigger, the source of the pain, the source that's under all the layers, you have to feel it. You have to feel it, come to terms with it and let it go. Truly let it go. And that's hard for people to do. It, any one aspect of what I just conveyed, it's hard for people to do because we are always guided to hold on to this stuff and forgive, but don't forget. So you're, it's ingrained in your brain and you're not doing yourself any favors. You are literally making it so you cannot heal because it's still here, taking up free rent in your brain. And where our mind goes, our energy flows. You look at yourself in the mirror and say, it's time to let this stuff go. It does not serve me well. It has never served me well. It's time to remove it from my day-to-day -day life and then take the steps to do that. That's, that's what we're asking for at this time. So in order to fully and completely heal, we have to face the fears. And fear is a subconscious construct. There's really nothing to fear that's not, you know, fire or like, like fear. It's, it's a, another layer of manipulation that, that the matrix the world we've grown up in, the lower densities love to um, interweave our lives in so much fear that we just end up becoming these chaotic, mind-blown people that don't know which end is up. And, and in order to take your power, your power back, you really have to go, okay, this fear is not for me. This fear is, is not substantiated. The more I think about fear, the more I'm fearful, the more I'm in a fear state, the more I give my power away, the more I manifest fearful things, it, it does not serve me well. Write that on the list of things to let go. When you really truly are doing your shadow work, it is conceivable to fill up several notebooks of journaling, several notebooks of lists of things that you're decluttering. On, on Sunday, you may be decluttering the house and feel like you did so much and you did. Congratulations. And on Tuesday, you may look around and see so many other things that in the matter of 48 hours, no longer serves you because you are growing beyond it. You're realizing that that served the old you and the person you are now, the person that you intend to stay, remain or become, maybe you're in process of getting there has no need for this stuff. Let it go. And letting go doesn't necessarily mean you got to find a new home for it. It's not up to you. You don't have to micromanage the things. Let them go. They will end up where they're supposed to be. They're not for you anymore. That's the extent of it. Determining what is for you, what is not for you, and then letting it go to the universe. That's a huge deal. Try to get there. So you want to lovingly forgive yourself. And lovingly offer love, compassion, empathy, and kindness to yourself for the things you have played a role in in your life that didn't end so well. Many are soul contracted. Many, you need to go, okay, I showed up for myself. 
I showed up in a way that was not comfortable. It didn't feel good. So-and-so showed up for me. He was the villain in my, in my story. And he didn't let me down. He provided me with a lot of context for me to grow. And that's how I went through my, my trials that were soul contracted, but came by way of other beings. Instead of projecting onto them all the things that I had work to do in my life, I saw it for face value. I soul contracted these events. These events came about in my life by way of these actors that, that took on the role that we assigned in the karmic board at my soul contract decisions. They showed up. I showed up. We're karmic. We let it go. I learned. They learned. I grew. They grew. We go our separate ways. It doesn't really need to be more complicated than that, but man, do we complicate it, don't we? Like as a culture, we complicate so many things that just don't need to be that, that difficult. And I say all the time, this can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. It's up to you. So when you invite in all the feelings of all the layers, one by one, and it may take you some time. This is not a race. I know um, a real life event story, story time with Hinda Lucia. Um, my twin flame husband in this life died part of a soul contract in a, in an accident in 1994. I proceeded to run from any thing that looked like dealing with that for a very long time it wasn't until 2022 no shit that I stopped carrying that box of um, medical records and death documents and last letters and all these things that serve no purpose around with me and I opened the box and I started to go through it and it was this flood of emotion as you can imagine I relived the days and nights that I was by his bedside in ICU and I relived donating his organs and what a mixed bag of emotions that is and I relived some of the conversations I had with him in a coma but in that moment August of 2022, I had come to realize that death was an illusion and that he being the other half of my soul had always been with me, but his energy had been blocked from me for a while because I was so toxic because I wasn't doing my shadow work and he wasn't going to be a part of that. I came back around to healing by way of feeling a lot of the things that pushed me away from healing earlier because I wasn't ready. I had to go through all the narcissists. I had to go through more failed relationships. I had to go through more heartache. I had to go through it. And that's what I say. The only way to get through it is to go through it. You can't walk around it. You can't jump over it. You can't bypass it. You can't act like it's not there. It will be there waiting for you. When you decide to show up for yourself. And that is what shadow work is. Like that's the crux of it. There's a whole host of people that I have encountered. And they're like, I don't know what you want me to do. You keep telling me I have shadow work to do. But I don't know what to do. Well, the first thing you got to do is deal with your ego. Because you understand your life's traumas a hell of a lot more than I do. And so you have to be able to get real with it. With yourself get real let go of the false pretense that you are this amazing badass that got over stuff without ever getting over stuff because you didn't it's a lie if you're still getting triggered over these things you didn't get over it you didn't heal from it you just acted like you did so get real be real with yourself that's really what it comes down to when you have physical pain emotional pain spiritual abuse, manipulation, 
um, sexual abuse, love unreceived is huge. It's a huge trauma event and it's prolonged. It's not one and done. It's, it's over years. Effort unreceived. When you put in so much effort to someone else and they are just taking it all, taking it all, taking it all and giving nothing back. That is an energy suck. That's an energy vampire. Many of us have been in relationships with energy vampires and we couldn't understand why we couldn't do more for them to make them want to be with us. They didn't want to be with us. They just wanted our energy. They wanted our money. They wanted our, our to take up all of our time, but not really give us anything in return. Does that sound familiar? Been there, done that. Got the t-shirt. An abandonment. How many of you have been abandoned? Were you abandoned by a parent? Were you abandoned by a spouse? Were you abandoned by a, a sibling? Abandonment is huge. And abandonment happens more often um, from free will choice than death. So when my children were, were little, okay, my twin flame dies. October, 1994, September, 1995, I find someone who's very interested in me for all the wrong reasons. I'm sure. Uh, I think he was more genuinely interested in me than I was in him, but I, I was in love with someone who did not physically exist anymore. And so when I encountered this person, I was like, Ooh, someone I could give this feeling this emotion to that I had for a, a literal different being that no longer existed. I know, but that was my life. So fast forward several years, we end up being together about seven years. My youngest is about one. My oldest is three and a half or three and a half. And he leaves. He's an addict. He's got issues. I didn't deal, deal with trauma. I had issues. It wasn't a good thing. It was best that we be apart. The way that that occurred was ugly. The way that it went down was, was really, really immature and very, very ugly. So my children were abandoned by their father for several months. Later, I realized the free will choice to walk away from your children is more corrosive, toxic, and damaging than if the parent dies. Because a parent's death, for the most part, is out of anyone's control. But a parent walking away for anything else is by choice. And that cuts deeper. So when you have lived through that, on whatever end of the relationship or spectrum or whatever that it is there is shadows to work through with that for me I had to work through the the part that I was such a bitch I, I, I was impossible to be around and yet I blamed him because I hadn't dealt with my own issues and and uh, you know nobody's perfect in this we we each have things to deal with but I'm not in control of him I never was, but I understood that I played a role in it and I had to give myself love. I had to give myself forgiveness. And then that opened up a, a whole new wound that I had to recognize that the abandonment, the betrayal, the love unreceived, effort unreceived, all of that stuff, it not only harmed my children, but it harmed me too. But I was too busy being pissed off to recognize that so much, right? So we all have issues. We all come to the table with a lot to deal with because it's almost as if there was some sort of a uh, higher dimensional mon monopoly game going on and whoever could soul contract the most treacherous uh, trip back to the higher dimensions would win. I don't know who's gonna win this one yet to be determined. But whenever you are ready 
to deal with healing in a real true sense. If you're done chasing the rabbit holes of the, of the what ifs and the whys, you just want to heal. Then you can let go of all that extraneous stuff, stuff because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter why someone did what they did. The fact is, remember, it's how we react to an action that's more important on our soul path, on our soul growth. So you don't want to go down all the rabbit holes of all the different personalities and the emotions and all the other different people that played a role in it. We want to heal us. We want to heal ourselves. Okay. So give energy to yourself. Don't let other stuff take the focus off of you. The soul contracted piece for me helps to make sense out of things that are very hurtful, very harmful, very negative, very hard to make sense out of. So when I understood that, that his death was soul contracted, then I understood why we were together for two and a half years in this live stream and that's it. And it, it just makes sense of the why was he taken so young? You know, he was he was 23. I was 21 in this life. Love to everyone involved in the event. And I mean true love to everyone involved with the event. Mostly yourself. Because as a culture, we go through life giving love to everything and everyone but ourselves. And I don't mean any of this in a conceited, selfish way. I mean truly compassionate, empathetic find love be the love of your life that's what i ask of you forgive all parties involved forgiveness for yourself and the role that you played because none of this just happens to you truly it doesn't fully forgive don't play into the i'm gonna forgive but i'm never gonna forget stuff because that's just leaving this really big heavy chain wrapped around you tying you to this event and you are courted to the, the all beings there and they can still siphon your energy off this for as long as it remains there gratitude to all involved understanding that free will choice means that they could have chosen not to show up for you and that would have left you short of that ev event aka that opportunity to grow and learn so this is a process that you want to set your intentions to do but your soul needs to make sure that it's healed to the point that that you can carry this out successfully so if this sounds really daunting then you're probably not ready to start that but you can start somewhere and then whenever it's time it's your time again not a race perhaps when you begin to feel weighed down or distracted you just say, okay, this is enough for the day. <clears throat> then you want to recenter and reground yourself, meditate, ask for clarity, pick it up the next day. Every day that you wake up is another day to make more progress in your soul expansion. It took a long time to unpack all those boxes I was carrying around. It really did. But these are some of the hallmark things for me that was truly transformative. Death is an illusion. There is a transfer of energy. They leave the physical form. But if it is their wish, because they have free will choice too, to stay in contact with you, the, and the ego is not a part of it, you can actually have a closer relationship with energy bodies after they transition than when they're in their life and in, in the confines of the soul contract. So nothing is ever truly lost. It's up to all parties involved on if they want to stay involved with you once they transition. Abandonment. Well, the upside of abandonment means outside of your own choices, you become introspective and can isolate and that gives you an opportunity to really heal it can see it as a positive for that love unreceived is oftentimes soul contracted it's an aspect of how we learn to love ourselves and how are we going to respond to that betrayal it continues to be a part of soul contracts but it's also to strengthen your resolve and to understand that 
your strength really comes from within us. Our strength comes from within. And the connection to the divine and the grounding to Mother Gaia, it really doesn't come from outside of us. Like people can prop you up and and you can cry on their shoulder and, and all of that stuff. But true strength comes from within. And in order to get there, you got to take all the accessories away, right? All the assist, assistive devices. It's like whenever you're healing from a surgery on your leg and you start out with a big cast or a big splint and you got crutches, and you're not putting weight on it, or maybe you're in a wheelchair and you go from, from one level of dependency to the next level of independency. And then all of a sudden you're independent. You drop the crutches, you're walking on your own. You don't need the assistive devices. It's the same thing. Addiction. More and more layers usually breed the perfect scenario for addiction because we want to numb all those feelings. So many times addictions are soul contracted or are the byproduct of soul contracted events. And we just need to see it as such. It is something that can absolutely be reversed just like PTSD. And just like all the other healing that we do, we take it one step at a time. And when you address the source of the issue, it truly is let go and healed and moved on. Judgment. Judgment is huge. Judgment was huge for me. Um, projections of my own wounds onto others was like a favorite pastime of mine for a very long time. And all of that is low frequency. All of that carries very low vibration and you will really gain nothing by it if that is your mo i implore you to look for other ways to use your energy many trauma survivors are numb they are numb to life they are numb in their physical form uh kuan yin speaks about it in her um admission of her own life story in the sophia code that she felt no pain she didn't feel when she burned her skin she didn't feel when she had cuts. She didn't feel when she had wounds. She did not feel. It's a, it's a self-protection mechanism. When you've gone through immense trauma and pain, walling up the ability to feel, it's protective, but it's also not living. It's not experiencing life. And so um, they, you, me, we all heal when we feel when we're really truly feeling the emotion of the event we are truly healing a piece of it why do you think people are so successful with equine therapy or water therapy or frequency rife scalar music why why do you think those modalities are super successful because they are real and they are raw and they are without the fluff of the subpar language that we have known all of our lives. The power of energy as energy bodies is all about frequency vibration. That is the name of the game. Anything else is placating the problem, putting a bandaid over it or making you numb. When we connect as energy bodies with with these big, loving, sentient, resilient beings that are super, super sensitive in horses. Most people don't give them the respect that they deserve. They are widely not treated very well and they deserve better. But in many cases, so did we. And we have that combined energy, but they can recognize this, a wounded soul from across the paddock, across the field. And they can come into you and, and give you such nurturing, compassion, energy that that feeling just goes away. I invite you to try. When we connect our energy bodies with sound, water, with the vibration of life, it's healing. If you're taking a handful of pills that are dead and toxic, you're going to feel dead and toxic. Hello. So with the connection to true living energy 
And quantum energy is the same. We are flowing energy from the divine to assist in healing and correcting these massive blockages and wounds. We call in the power of the elements, earth, air, water, fire, love, fifth element, love, most powerful thing in the universe. That is whenever we really start breaking down walls. That's like the image of the really stoic, you know, like firefighter who's lost friend after friend, partner after partner, seen death and dismemberment in ways he can't even begin to describe to you. And his dad comes in and gives him a really, really compassionate, loving hug. And that big, strong fireman just breaks down because that's what he needed. It's true energy. It transforms. Feeling is healing. And fearing the feeling is false. Don't go there. I invite you to violetlotusenergy.com. Sign up for your QET session. Understand that source has guided me to break down shadow work in really digestible pieces. And so we have the shadow work series that I'm not completed yet. Uh, I have the letting go series. I have all about QET. Once you get your QET done, what to expect, things to do for that. Uh, I have the telegram groups where you have a community of people, like-minded souls that are on this journey with you and it can definitely hear and be empathic for you. Also spaces is a, a associated uh, social space for the website where you can go and have join the support groups that we have there and see what all is going on there. So you're not on the journey alone unless you choose to be. That is definitely true. And even if you feel like you're alone, like if you're the only physical form in a room and you feel like you're alone, you're not. <laughs> you have a room full of ascended masters right now and spirit guides and orbs all over the place. That is my life. I welcome you to understand that we are all energy. We're all benevolent. We're all here for the same mission. And that is to ascend out of the lower frequencies, allow our soul to evolve and expand in ways that we could never fathom five months ago, five years ago, heck, for some five minutes ago, and do it together because we are loving and we are moving into unity consciousness out of this social isolation that we've been in. So the next video that you're going to see from me is about the dreaded trickster energy. I'll see you again next time. Many blessings.